Hey. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Simeon Henderson Show, where we are giving a voice to the people. I am excited to be back. You know, I've been in Belize. I've been traveling, working, doing a lot of um, community work, a lot of just helping people and doing things to make a difference in this world and just trying my best to do my part. So it's been a, it's been a hectic last few days. I know a lot has been going on with the George for, uh, Floyd trial and different things with these different shootings with these police officers and different things going on. But today what I want to do is I want us to take a break. I want us to take a break from the madness. I want us to sit back. I want us to get some information, have a little fun and just do something a little different. So today, what I want you to do at this time, I want you guys to enjoy the show. I have a great guest. We're going to have a great time. You're going to get a lot of information and you're going to get some good information and know what this brother is doing. But I'm just excited to be back in the States. I'm excited about the different things that's going on. I'm excited about the the verdict of the trial, that justice is starting to be served, but we have a lot of work to do. The work is not over, it has just begun. But right now, it's time for us to have a good show. So without further ado, we're gonna kick it off like we do all the time, right here on the Simeon Henderson Show. So kick back, relax, and get ready, because I'm back and I am ready to have a good time with you because we're giving a voice to the people. See you in a second. Stopping now, it ain't no stopping now. Ain't no stopping now, there ain't no stopping now. Ain't no stopping now, it ain't no stopping now. Ain't no stopping now, it ain't no stopping now. This what you wanted, what you wanted. Cause ain't no turning back, turning back. This what you wanted, what you wanted. Cause ain't no turning back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Simeon Henderson Show, where we are giving a voice to the people. Tonight, we're excited to have with us Chicago's very own David A. Turner. Now, David A. Turner is a professional certified public accountant. He holds a master's degree in accounting and an executive certificate in management. David is an innovative business leader, and David is committed to sharing his insights with non-profit, non-for-profit uh, organizations and individuals with limited resources. He is a proud member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. As a leader with the Fraternities Brotherhood of Conscious Men, David Turner's servant uh, leadership, it has uh, elevated him with uh, to becoming the 27th Great Lakes Regional Director. David is currently a 2021 candidate uh, for the Office of International Vice President, of, I'm sorry, First Vice President of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, and he has the ambition, experience, and the skills to navigate the organization and brand of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity to its next level. And I'm super excited to have him on the show. And he he's actually, we're actually in the same chapter and uh, grad chapter, but it's one of those things where it's always great to know awesome brothers. So without further ado, I wanna bring to you and welcome to the Simeon Henderson Show, Mr. David A. Turner. How Thank you doing? Thank you for having me. You're right. It's great to have uh, know some awesome brothers. And so I can say that about you as well. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Man, it's, it's such a uh, a pleasure to finally have you on the show. And it's one of those things where it's so funny. I remember when the show first started and it's like you always, oh, man, who? what guests are we going to have next week? Who are we going to get? And now I can't. <laughs> I can't <laughs> fit people in, <laughs> and that's a blessing. That's because, a good problem to have. Yeah, the show is growing and people are watching it. But I think the most important thing about my show is the fact that when I say giving a voice to the people, we're talking to entrepreneurs, actors, entertainers, athletes, business people, community leaders, doctors, lawyers, and the whole gamut. And and my my goal is to inspire, educate, and motivate people. We need good things like this. So, um, and speaking of good things, let's go right to you, brother. So I want you to talk to us um, about your educational background and your pre- preparation um, for becoming a CPA. Yeah, so I actually uh, didn't know I wanted to do accounting. 
I actually chose accounting during the, uh, my junior year of college, during the second semester of my junior year. Um, mm -hmm. So um, something just clicked and uh, I just loved it. And so it's been kind of my passion. I, I work at it, but it's also something I just enjoy doing. So it's, it's what I do um, at work, but then outside of work, uh, I find myself also advising and working in financial capacities with individuals and uh, businesses, so forth. Uh, again, it's, it's it's beautiful, like you finding something you enjoy doing, then you don't mind doing it uh, at seven o'clock at night or you know, or six a.m. in the morning. So, so, and and that's the one thing is so it's so funny that you know, brothers, man, and and when I say brothers, I mean black men. It doesn't matter what color you are. But we're so resilient, especially the black man. We're so resilient and we come from a history of overcoming. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you this. Talk to us about how you feel as a black man living in America during these times. Well, you know what? Um, to yesterday, uh, when the uh, Chauvin verdict came out, um, mm -hmm. surprising to myself, I was like emotional about it, you know, um, even more so than I, than I thought I would, would be, um, you know, I grew up on the South side of Chicago. Uh, yes. I've had occasion, you know, when I was a, a, uh, college student and, and went to court uh, in downtown Chicago to, to fight a, a, you know, a ticket, you know, I had a police officer threaten me in the middle of the courthouse. And so, wow. you know, it's, it's really, you know, people, think throughout America are really starting to see uh, the black experience in America and hopefully starting to at least acknowledge that, you know, our trauma is real um, mm -hmm. and it is, you know, it's not made up uh, and it didn't right. end, you know, slavery, slavery ended so many years ago, get over it. Uh, it didn't end. And so, you know, it is, um, again, come from the South side of Chicago, so forth. It's, um, you know, we're, we've come so far, but but yet there's still so much further uh, to go. Yes, yes, yes. And and, and the thing about that is it's, people don't understand. It's really tough. And, and this is not, and it's just a reality. It's tough being a black man in America. Because when you think about it, we have been dealing with, um, slavery, depression, um, oppression, and, and and just being held back for so many years. Yeah. And this is just the reality. And I think once people really start to, to uh, understand and, and um, know that that reality is real, I think that's when the real change can come. But until people face the fact, and a lot of people are starting to open their eyes to it. It doesn't matter what color. You have white people, all type of people, they're, they're realizing that it's wrong. And it is wrong on so many levels because you're talking about human beings. So um, so that's enough of that for now. <laughs> tell us uh, tell us about your professional experience managing people and teams. Because I know you, you, you do deal with people a lot. And even even yeah, in the yeah. even in an organization, it's all about people. So tell us about your experience with that. Yeah, so I, I spent uh, 16 years working for uh, Caterpillar, so Fortune 50 company, um, in in uh, you know in the accounting ranks, coming through the accounting ranks, leading teams uh, on the audit side, supporting, uh, reporting for the board of directors. Um, took that corporate experience, and the last 10 years, nine years, I've worked. Here in Chicago for a minority-owned real estate development uh, firm. So we manage about we have about uh, twelve thousand units. Uh, affordable housing primarily is kind of our uh, expertise. Uh, my direct team is about forty. But we have uh, close to nine hundred uh, employees, and so you know we realize every day that everything we do affects the uh, the lives and the livelihood of not just our eight hundred plus employees, but their families as well. And so, you know, my job as a, as a leader, I've got the business responsibilities, but just, just as much, if not more, is taking care of, uh, of the people. And even in my role as, as regional director, it's the same thing. 
uh, mm-hmm. taking care of the brothers, understanding their needs, understanding their concerns, and mm-hmm. trying to make sure that we as an organization are uh, are addressing and speaking to their to their needs and concerns. Right, right. Okay. And it's, it's so, and people, to deal with people in the capacity that you deal with, Caterpillar, that's like one of the mm-hmm. biggest companies in the world. Mm-hmm. It's a huge company. And for yep. you to be a black man and be in a prestigious position there, that, that says a lot about about your um your perseverance, your hard work, and all the different things that you've uh, had to endure in order to get where you are where you're at. And that's why it's so important for people like you to come on the show so we can see examples of brothers that's putting in work and that's being successful, but not only being successful, but also being directly involved with the success of other people. And I think that's so important. So, so when we talk about, we talked about, you know, your education and being a black man and 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 you working with people. What inspired you to become a member of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity? So when I was uh, at, at University of Illinois, uh, the guys that uh, helped me move into my to my dorm uh, were Sigmas. Uh, on Saturday mornings, they would knock on my door and say, "Hey, we're going to the Boys and Girls Club." Uh, one of the Founding chapter members of that of that chapter actually ran the Boys and Girls Club in in town, and uh, it wasn't really about um, being a sigma. So before I was even considered for being a sigma, or even thought about it, it was, hey, we're going to this Boys and Girls Club. We're going out in the community. We're doing these things. Do you want to come with us? And so it was really about finding, I think, like minded individuals and saying, you know. You know if you want to be a part of this, here's an opening. And so I think they kind of sparked in me something that, you know, I had a passion for just helping people. Um, and we've got a, a, aside from Sigma, I'm a part of the National Association of Black Accountants. And I just love their motto, which is lifting as we climb. And so you made the comment about helping others, so forth. And, you know, from a leadership perspective, right, it makes no it's no value if I reach the highest peaks in an organization, profession, but I haven't helped anybody else yes. uh, step up. And so I, I just love that model, lifting as we climb. Uh, and then again, the Brotherhood Scholarship Service uh, with Phi Beta Sigma. Those two for me go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and and again, just it's things I enjoy uh, enjoy doing. It's one of those things where I th- I just think I did a, a post, I do the morning inspiration and I talked about not thinking you not thinking too highly of yourself and knowing how to stay yeah. humble. Yeah. And I think that yeah. when you get in a position of of success and even some positions of power, people forget what it was like as they were on their way, you know, as they were on their way. And so what you have to understand is you know, no matter how successful you are, how much money you are, or how much how much prestige you have, you are still a human being. So you have to treat human beings accordingly. You have to treat people how you want to be treated. And in a profession like your like what you're in, everything you do has to deal with people. You would not have any success, brother, if right. you didn't have Absolutely. the personality <laughs> that you have, and you didn't have a love for people because so many people want they want friends. But they're not friendly. They won't love, but they're not lovable. So, so it's right. one of those things where they go hand in hand, you know. And so, I have a, and I have enough people around me as well that, that keep me grounded, so they know oh, yeah, me well yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, I know they're gonna keep you around. I know they're not gonna let you stray. You know, my line brother's like, "Yeah, we know you CFO over there, but right here, <laughs> hey, look, no stray cats, <laughs> right?" So, so here we go. Um, now, now we're talking about Phi Beta Sigma fraternity and yep. and your involvement. Talk to us about uh, your success as regional director uh, right here in the Great Lakes region. See, I mean, because that's a that's a huge task, you know. Being a regional director, you're yep. you're you oversee a lot. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to tell you one of the things I'm most um, proud of, and again, it's not right my personal doing, is I feel like we are the most Unify uh, as a region as we've been in you know, the last 20 years. Um, mm-hmm. 
And we've kind of cast a vision, kind of a plan, and brothers have just bought in and they just made it happen. So every kind of metric we we track, uh, brothers have just kind of blown through uh, our targets. So our mm-hmm. growth has been strong. Our uh, activation, charter and re- reactivation of collegiate chapters uh, has been strong. Just the love of brothers, right? That feeling of connection uh, has been uh, extremely uh, extremely strong. And so I'm, I'm very, very proud of that. You know, we've certainly done a number of things to try to bring more services to the brothers. Yeah. Um, again, more uh, with, with, with uh, you know, gift cards that we do for uh, new members now, with just more personal letters that we do to, uh, to new members, with our reaching out from a leadership team to just brothers in general, um, not just when I started, um, brothers would be like, "Hey, you the regional director calling me? Like, yeah, man, I'm just I'm just brother Turner. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just brother Turner." Um, yeah. But that's been well received. That brothers feel like the leadership has a personal interest in yes. in each of us, and that's what really building an organization is about. The people that that you lead have to feel like you care about them. Um, they have to trust that you'll go through the fire with them, not just send them into the minefield uh, <laughs> ahead uh, ahead of you. And so I think that's one, been one of the strongest things uh, in our region um, in it's this last couple of years. It's because of brothers like you that I am back active. You know, it's because of brothers like you that I am back active and and doing my part and and just being being trying to get back in the forefront because everything that I everything that I do for a living is what Sigma stands for. Culture for service, service for humanity, uh, community service. All of those things are all the things that I do. So this is what reminds me of why I became a Sigma. I became a Sigma because it was what I already embodied, the qualities right. and the values. And and I think that's so important. Now let me say this, I got to I got to go here. Cuz see I want I want anybody that sees this video I mean this this interview. I want them to see a fun part of you, right? So we know <laughs> we know you're the regional director. We know you handle business and all of that. Let's talk a little bit about how fun it was when you were undergrad. <laughs> how fun was it being a sigma in college? Um so we had the uh largest chapter uh, on campus and the largest chapter in the region. Um, uh, what school? My, you to? University of Illinois at Champaign. You went to Champaign, right? Yeah. Yeah. Urbana. Yep. yeah. Right. Urbana. So uh, I was as a as a neophyte. I was the uh, co coordinator of Sweetheart Court, um, <laughs> and uh, so um, you know we, we party. We had a good. We had we party. We had a good time. Uh, we road tripped, um, <laughs> and uh, so I know brothers all across the state, all across the region, because uh, we would just hop in a hop in a car and mm-hmm. you know wake up and we were in you know in in Carbondale. I remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, um, and, and the only reason I brought that up is because there there are going to be young people that see this. We have I have sons that. You know, they inspire to play at Sigma, but I just wanted them to know, yes, there's a lot of business that takes place, but we also know how to have fun. We know how to enjoy ourselves. We know, you know, we, we know how to help the community and do all these different things. And we're prestigious brothers. And and, and I'll say this about the Divine Nine, period. Mo- mostly all of the brothers I know across the board, whether it's Sigmas, Alphas, Kappas, Q-Dogs, um, Iotas, or whatever have you, uh, everybody, I know a lot of brothers that are very successful and that they always doing community service and we work together. So this is just, yeah, we have fun together. Yeah, that, right. So it's who we are. So just because, you know, we good friends and you decide to play something else, we still going to be friends, but we yeah. can still do some work to make a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. So now you're a candidate for the international first vice president, right? Yeah. As a candidate for, uh, international first uh, vice president if you were ele- if you were elected 
Like, what's your vision for marketing the Phi Beta Sigma fraternity brand to take it to the next level? Yeah, you know what? Let me just start with this, which, which leads into that. And I, this is hard for people to hear sometimes. Um, but one of the things that uh, I think brothers need to accept and understand is we always talk about brotherhood, and that, and I'm not saying nothing, right? Absolutely. But it's also a multi million dollar multinational uh, nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. And so we've got, um, you know, a, a building development project we're working on to provide affordable housing uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to the DC community. Uh, we're working with, I'm working with the Sigma PAC on uh, elevating Sigma men at levels, uh, at, at, at every level. Uh, in government. And, uh, and so I think one of the, the kind of marketing signal is really pushing forward with some of those bigger uh, mm -hmm. projects in Sigma, like the Sigma Pack, like our headquarters development project, which really shows the, the, true, um, the true strength of the organization in impacting the communities that, that we serve. And so, yes, we'll do, you know, certainly our social media and advancing those things. But I think, you know, really being able to take on the bigger projects, the high impact initiatives are the things that will will demonstrate the power and, and, the, and the strength of, of the organization. And that's one of the biggest things I think I bring uh, to that role. OK, cool, cool. All right. I like it. I like it. So everybody, you're watching the Simeon Henderson show where we're giving a voice to the people. And I am here with the one and only David A. Turner right here on the show. I want to give a shout out to my executive producer, Jamani Anamdi, my producer, Jose Perez, and my creative director and producer, Shelton Smith. We are here to give a voice to the people. And we're going to take a quick break. And during this break, I want to play for you a new song by a young man coming out of Chicago. And his album is titled State of Being, and I will have his information scrolling, but we'll be back in one minute with the Simeon Henderson Show. So take a break, relax, and check out this new music by Sinister, State of Being, right here on the Simeon Henderson Show. We'll be right back. Bag, can of peas, losing sis, she met her fate. I lost cousins, uncles up in this race. Still humble, I set a pace. Refuse to be product of my environment. Hit the iron in the vocals, desiring the chest. I'm hopeful, I gotta win. I came a long, long way. Still far to go, but my state of being changed. I seen it and lived through it. Youngest, losing life from living ruthless. I'm grateful I came through it, but I'm praying for those in it. The glory you went and it was written as a youngin'. Fall in my position, get the spitting like it's nothing. Crawled out of my slumber to wallow with my abundance. The jungle will swallow fellas at 12, we steady talking. I'm just pitching for fam, I gotta touch it. And I ain't slipping the slack and I got you buzzing. With me and Dez, we're slapping back in the cutlass. Macking them senior readers on Ashland by the harness. And the passion was enormous. But the flows were laid dormant. Until I came to a place of recognizing this grace. Great talent, I hone it. My state of being. State of being. All 
All right, everybody. All right, all right. That was State of Being by Jay Sinister. Send O to God. Big shout out to you, man. I love the music. I love the beat. I love the swag. And you are doing your thing. We will show his video next week when a video is done and up. We will show the video. We love um, uplifting and promoting uplifting and promoting our artists our chicago artists that are doing big things and if you would like to check out his album you can go to www.jsinister.com make sure you scroll down to player and um click the um to buy um button um buy the album so www.jsinister.com that's j a y s i nista.com and when you get there scroll to the player and click buy the album state of being it's a great hip-hop album real hip-hop you guys are gonna love it nice flow and if you listen to that just now you know exactly what i'm talking about so make sure you guys um support my boy and my my family jay sinister all right we're back right now with my main man uh <laughs> david turner yeah david we're always trying to uh promote good music good people yep. and people working hard so that um, I, the thing and i know i know you like hip-hop the thing i like about jay sinister's album i love the beat i love the flow and mm. you listen to it he's talking about something and i think that's one thing that we have to get back to in music because music is so instrumental in and shaping and molding the lives of our young people yeah, the, I mean, certainly the message is, is important, right? Um, and that's, yes. I was just having a discussion not too long ago about, you know, some music. I hate to be like the, you know, music today, I, I don't like being that guy. But uh, right. but it was really about, like, right, when we listened to, um, uh, you know, groups back in the day, it was <laughs> certainly it was about the music, right, the, 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 the beat and the flow, but it was right. also kind of the, the content that we picked up on and yes. we connected with as well. And so that's that's beautiful. Because I can I can hear some hip hop from 20 years ago and I can spit every lyric. Because <laughs> it was just that good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you know, yep. you follow me back to people like Big Daddy Kane, Eric B and Rakim, Nas, Jay, yep. you know, uh Biggie, all of them, they all and like one thing like Biggie Smalls, one thing I loved about him, he always told a story. He was telling exactly. those stories and it, it exactly. just it helped made you intrigued. You're like, man, did he really do that? What happened next? You know, so it's one of those things where music can really shape and mold people. So we have to be mindful and conscious of the content that we put out and the content that we receive. So we've been sitting here and um, I just got a couple more questions for you. I, okay. I, I'm enjoying my time with you and just getting a, a, a lot of knowledge from you and insight to who you are and the things you're doing. And I, I just tip my hat to you, brother, because anytime you step into a position of leadership, it's one that people have to know that sometimes it can be stressful. Sometimes it can be overbearing. But when you got that, you got that intestinal fortitude and you got that, that keep going power you all good and you got it brother so let me ask you this so how important is it for sigma to invest and uh invest and focus on the youth in the community because now we have to really start paying attention to our youth because we're getting older and they're coming up yep. behind us. so we have to get them ready but you know how important do you think it is uh, as a as a member of phi beta sigma and dealing with young the youth and, and adults yeah, I mean, absolutely important, right? Uh, these are the the, the uh, young men and women that I got to. You know, we have to rely on to uh, run our economy uh, for our future, for our retirement, and so forth. You know, right now we've got our current president talks a lot about the trilogy of change, uh, right. which is which is kind of bringing together our sigma betas, which mm -hmm. is our youth uh, male mentoring eight to eighteen, then our collegiates, and then our alumni. Uh, member, so going through that whole kind of train, you know, uh, lifespan of mm -hmm. manhood uh, from a young man to to older, and so right. of course we do our uh, single beta clubs here. We have our adopted schools, and so we're really uh, pushing uh, those initiatives because we're needed, you know, now more than ever. They're certainly been tr challenging here over the last year uh, in the uh, you know COVID world. 
with respect to meeting in person, but our teams have done a great job of you know, using the virtual environment. Uh, and I'll give my hats off to the, the current administration, our, our, our current president. Uh, you know, we had our Global Founders Day in, in January mm-hmm. and uh, Brother Victor Glover, uh, some of our young men in our single beta club were able to speak directly to uh, Victor Glover from the space station. So you know, what an yes. amazing experience as a you know 10 year old, 12 year old yes. to be able to say, man, I spoke to an astronaut yeah. while he was in space. <laughs> I had a conversation with him. Yes. And those are the things that make a difference. And, and it's so sometimes it's the, it's the littlest things that can make a difference. But then something like that is huge for a young person to talk to someone in space, an yeah. astronaut. And, and it's one of those things where, you know, when you were growing up, if the teacher said, raise your hand and tell me what you want to be when you grow up. And I, I'll never forget this. This is a true story. Um, one of the pe- one of the young men said they wanted to be a doctor. And the teacher, and it was a white teacher, the teacher looked at him and said, oh, that's nice. What else do you want to be? Like totally went over that as as if, uh, as if that was too far fetched. Yeah. So what am I saying? We have to um, be mindful of what we speak and put into the young people because they're impressionable. And if you make them think they can't do it, they're going to they're not going to try. And we know that that's not the so. So now. So here we go. So talk to us about your partnering with with black entrepreneurs. Um, t- talk to us about that. Uh, you partner with partnering with black entrepreneurs uh, to get uh, Phi Beta Sigma members uh, and uh, promotional necessities. Yeah. So one of the things we're doing right now, uh, we'll be rolling out our pilot this weekend is uh, we've got a, uh, a members perks platform. But also within that, we have the ability to highlight our uh, Sigma owned and African-American owned uh, businesses. And so as part of our overall Bigger and Better Business program uh, here in the region, we're piloting something that we believe will go national uh, over the next uh, over the next 12 months. And so it creates a platform to to highlight those businesses, not just to Sigma members, but also to uh, the broader network of companies that uh, that use the same platform, which includes yes. Google, Tesla, and a number yeah. of Fortune 1000 companies. Yes, yes, yes. And, and and I'm saying this out loud, so so it can't say that it was never said or nobody nobody knew. Um, I really want to be a part of, and and that's one of the reasons why I got back active is because I want to be a part. I don't want to be one of those brothers because we, and I'm just being candid we have brothers that are that are celebrities and in sports and different things like that and they don't and they love sigma but they don't they don't make the time all of the time to give back and come in and pay it forward and and just being directly directly involved and my goal is to be directly involved because when i joined the organization it was to make a difference. It was to become a part of a brotherhood. It was to do to be able to do something past college to make a difference. Right. So uh, I'm telling you, I'm throwing it out there right now that you know I'm I'm my hat is my my name is in the hat. I'm ready whenever you guys need you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys want to uh, highlight anybody or anything that you guys are doing that's making a difference. You can always use this platform. You can always use me. Because that's what we have to do for each other. Well, you know, you'll be getting you'll be getting the call. And I think that's one of the things that you know uh, that we've done differently, and I think I think as an organization we're we're moving toward as well. Which is part of that responsibility is on the individual, part of it is on us to make sure, right, that you know, hey, um, you can do all those things that are your passion, and mm-hmm. right here within Sigma. So there. So I think one of the things that's been great for us is. I don't really have an issue with um, your know, titles, so forth. What I've told mm-hmm. brothers is, if you've got a passion and it brings uh, value to the brotherhood, and you ready and you want to lead that, tell me what you need to be successful. We'll figure out a title, mm-hmm. but just come do it. Come and and you know, right, run with your passion. Right. Um, right. And if it's bringing value to the brotherhood, then we're going to help you make it successful. That's what's up. That's what's up. So so before we get out of here. I have to mention this because this is huge. And I want you to tell us about <laughs> the deal that you garnered with um, 
one of the top PC manufacturing uh, companies worldwide. What, tell it, tell everybody about that. This is, I mean, this is big stuff. I mean, I know you sit yeah, there like yeah. you know, like you're a regular average Joe, but this is what I, this is what I do. It's what I do. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know about that. <laughs> one of the things that brothers talk about a lot is, hey, you know, what are the you know added you know perks and benefits of membership? You know, what are the you know, the pluses? And uh, and it's always been this talk about you know we should be we 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 need to do so forth. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm the kind of person if if I'm walking down the, you know, down the hallway and there's a paperclip on the floor, I pick it up. So if there's a problem and say, you know, hey, we need to work on it, nobody's working on it, I'm gonna go work on it. Right. So uh, we were fortunate uh, to be able to make the right connection. And and to be honest with you, uh, once I started working on, we got partway down the line, and then mm -hmm. we identified we had a frat brother that had been with them for. 20 years on the sales force. Wow. And so that actually uh, kind of sealed the rest of it for us in, uh, in finalizing everything. And so, you know, we've got such a vast network uh, of, of brothers and the things they do and their talents and their connections and so forth. There's really nothing that we can't bring to Sigma and to our communities yes. with the skills that, that we have uh, within the brotherhood. But the Lenovo deal is small compared to what's coming next. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep you posted on, on what's coming up next. Okay, okay. Everybody, you're watching the Sydney Henderson Show, where we're giving a voice to the people. And before we say goodbye to our distinguished guest, Mr. David A. Turner, we want you to check out the five things you should know right here on the Simeon Henderson Show by our very own Chicago Fly Guy. So hold on, David. We got, we got you for another minute. But before... Okay. I want everybody to check out the five things that they should know right here on the Simeon Henderson Show. We'll be right back. It's America's favorite personality, your Chicago fly guy, bringing you the top five things that you need to know right here on the Simeon Henderson Show. Number five, DMX will be memorialized this weekend at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. DMX suffered a heart attack and unfortunately he passed away April 9th. Number four, Caitlyn Jenner says she feels a whole lot safe now that a judge has ordered her stalker, Malik Malker, to step back and stay the hell away from Kendall for the next five years. Number three, former Chicago Bulls superstar Scottie Pippen lost his eldest son, Antron, this past weekend. Antron suffered from chronic asthma. He was 33 years old, and 33 is also the number Scotty wore when he played with the Chicago Bulls. Number two, has Britney Spears gone and done it again? Well, some say the sensational singer has crossed the line now that she's on the front line for Black Lives Matter. You go, girl. Number one, we waited for tiptoe anticipation for the verdict to be read for George Floyd. Guilty, guilty, and guilty again. Three counts for guilty. Show me you going to the slammer. I'm your Chicago Fly Guy, and this has been the top five things and best 411 that you need to know right here on the City on Henderson Show. All right, all right. That's our very own Chicago Fly Guy, and he's also a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Look, I wear it. Look, Andre gave me this, and I wear it. I've worn this thing since he gave it to me. I made a mistake and wore it on set in a movie one time. They were like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, man, I had on my Sigma bracelet. <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's well, a you got one of these coming to you too, if you can see it. That's that's coming your way. I can see it, but I can't see what it says. It's a uh, it's a pin that marks uh, one of our, our membership milestone that we reached uh, for 2020. And so we did oh. a commemorative pin. So all brothers that were uh, that were financial uh, in 2020 uh, are getting this pin. So oh, yeah. you'll, you'll have one of these coming your way pretty, pretty soon. Hey, I keep this in my pocket, brother. I keep it in my <laughs> pocket. I'm proud of that. And uh, so everybody, so you've been watching the show. We've been having a good time. And before we get out of here, Mr. Turner, I want you to um, to talk to my people as a leader, offer our viewers a message uh, on remaining resilient and how they can secure your services 
as a CPA and keep up um, with your community leadership? Yeah, so you can you can of course uh, uh, from a Sigma perspective catch catch me on uh, Facebook Turner the number four Sigma. I also have a uh, David A Turner CPA is my uh, my practice uh, that I do work with uh, nonprofits and uh, and small businesses uh, and just a lot of individual uh, consultants. I think one of the things that just real quick I like to tell folks is um, talk to a CPA before you need a CPA. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, it'll be less expensive to you. Yes, 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 yes. So, <laughs> so man, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I want to, I want to thank you so much for just taking the time to enlighten us and talk to us about what you've been doing, how you got there, and not only that, I think it was really important to see the things that you're doing also with your with your fraternity and. The, you being a regional director and then going tr going in even higher as international first international uh, vice president. It's just one of those things where you're going to continue to make a difference. And people, you're you're uh, you're a trailblazer, brother. And I'm proud to know you. And I can't wait to get in the trenches with you and do some work. All right, well, you know, I'm, I, I already told you already. We got. <laughs> I'm oh, calling. Hey, I'm a man of my word. All you have all you have to do is call, brother, and it's on. It's we'll all do, like, we'll do. like hot butter on popcorn. <laughs> so thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. You have Thanks, a great man. night, and I'm looking forward to being in touch. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Go, Mark. Mark. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the Semi Henderson Show, where we're giving a voice to the people. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here. And before we get out of here, I just want to give you another taste of State of Being by Sinister, the God. Sinno the God. And you can go check them out. It's right here. Go check them out at www.jsinister.com. Scroll to player and click the buy button. All right, buy the album. So, Sinister, y'all check it out, okay? Yeah. See you guys next week. No true goals or real dreams. Know the truth hurt when you would...